Oh, hey, it's a new game. It's uh, Honkai Star Rail. That doesn't tell me what this is about. I wonder if the opening will tell me. All right, there's Casco. I'm in. Story. Look, a story is important. It is the context by which you do things, and that context gives you meaning beyond the mechanics of the game. So I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Let me begin by saying I feel like I'm in the middle of a story that has been going on, which is good in media's rest isn't necessarily a bad thing. The bad news is when I'm paying attention, I get the urge to take a drinky drink, which despite the old adage of JRPGs not making sense, it's not entirely true. Many RPGs, JRPGs are thoroughly understandable when couched in basic ideas like your town is on fire and now it is your problem. Here's the thing though, we don't seem all that interested in getting you into the story. The characters in particular just sound bored and flat. Who's this? Herta? Yeah. Huh. She looks so young. She was already famous in the last- Look, I don't know. They just sound really, really bored. Let me know in the comments below if it's just the way they're supposed to sound. I know the context they're in, they implied that a lot in the dialogue, but still, it just seems they're disinterested. Although honestly, I don't know if that's really the appeal anyway, because here's a shot from early on in the game. And now here is one of the first conversations in the game. It looks like the main character of the game is a pair of boobs talking to a random icon. And I know it's a small thing, and you know what? I get waifu gachas, I play Azure Lane, but that really did set the tone for how much I should care about the story. It's like she's intentionally turning her face away. You know, just to minimize the idea of an identity, I digress. The good news is, later on, it doesn't really matter. They establish your point in the story. You are special, and we don't know why. And now you're gonna go on adventures on a train or something. And you know what? That seems fairly simple, but I'm here for it. It's not a bad thing. Gameplay! And this is where the game shocked me, because it scratched an itch I did not even know I had. And that was for good old classic JRPG turn-based gaming. You know, the kind of gameplay that is now pretty much gone from a lot of JRPGs, even Final Fantasy, which for a lot of people was where they entered the JRPG scene, doesn't really want to be there anymore. They want to be part RPG and part spectacle fighter, which is fine. It's great. I love the remake. However, it is not a turn-based game. You play as this random person. You get to choose your body type and then your name. You are then given a weapon because you are the main character. And because this is a JRPG, you are going to use a very special weapon. Something that defines your experience in the game and tells you how to relate to the world around you. A, a, a bat. A baseball bat. Mind you, it's a, it's a pretty cool bat and I'm kind of here for it. So that's basically it, which is really underselling the game. It is a turn-based RPG in the classical style. You can have a party of up to four people, some of which you're gonna have to gacha for, which I'll get into later. But I think I gotta point out something about the gameplay that shocks me, that probably doesn't shock a lot of people who've been playing mobile games. I only recently got a good phone, although I am playing this on the computer. It doesn't feel like a mobile game like I'm used to thinking about. It feels like a full PC game. And I don't know if you've noticed, but this game is absolutely gorgeous. Not gonna lie, I had some feelings when I first saw this super. God, everything's just so pretty. And the sound. The sound is so crisp. With it, my music conquers all. But I am playing on PC, so you might have a different experience on the mobile. So now you know how to interact with the game, which is turn-based RPG style. But what do you do with it? Where do you take it? Well, apparently there's a roguelike mode. And I assume there's some sort of adventure mode where you go through the story campaign. Honestly, I played it for like an hour, two hours maybe, and I think I just finished the tutorial. But now we must discuss the elephant in the room. The gotcha. So it's a gotcha game. Before anything else though, I gotta say, the rolling screen is uh, pretty cool. I don't know man, something about it I, just really speaks to me. I just like it. However, lest we forget, 
It is a gacha game. Which means legal gambling and a bunch of confusing currencies. And you know what? That's fine. I play Destiny. I'm going to play Diablo 4. And those are live service games, which is what a gacha is. Essentially, it's a live service game. What I think is important is to find out what you can get in the gacha and how critical it is to advancement. Near as I can figure, it's almost critical to advancement. You need dupes of characters to quote unquote ascend them or at least unlock more abilities. You also have various equipment and improvements like light cones, which while you can't pick them up adventuring, you can also get more on the gacha. I'm desperately hoping that they have a way of advancing characters through alternate means. Azure Lane has a bullion system where you can replace a duplicate with a bullion, a ship that is specifically designed to let you advance or limit break a character. So that gives you more ways to get more out of your game, or at least keep up with the difficulty of future updates. I have not played Genshin Impact extensively, which is the only other Hoyoverse game that I know of. And I'm not that deep into the game, maybe there's more ways to empower your characters. But that is certainly something to keep in mind if you're going to get into this game. Also, the gacha is definitely involved because you're going to want new characters to play with. That's just... Turns out the stick that I'm going to use to scratch my itch is... Uh, is an expensive stick. It does seem like our future is filled with constantly paying for stuff rather than a one-time payment. And you know what? I don't have the power to oppose it. I just have the power to decide what is right for me. As you have the power to decide if this game is for you. If you want to play Honkai Star Rail for yourself, it's available on mobile devices and on Windows. I didn't know so many mobile games were on Windows. That's it for me, though. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell. Do all those nice things and more. But you don't have to do anything. I say I'm not a boss of you. Who I am is Panator. And I will see you later. Stay tuned after the music because this is a short video and I want to make it 10 minutes. You know, for YouTube. It'll just be some footage with a mini boss. Thanks. Pretty good crowd today. <laughs> Ready to lose yourself? Fight it or rock with it. My music conquers all. You're annoying. Try that again. Time for a detailed overhaul. With me out here, how can we lose? Let's rock! Let's make it quick. Take this! You won't get away! I have something for you. <laughs> Rules are made to be broken. This song's just for you. Keep up my tempo! Let's go. Someone come on. Perhaps you still don't understand. Humanity never conceals its desire to control the heavens. And I'm no exception. Pretty good crowd today. <laughs>